Hi, welcome back to Books Are the New Rich. I am your host, April Sharice, where we cover a, a plethora of topics, but most importantly, how can an author market their book better? And today I am joined by a longtime friend who has covered everything from publishing a book to marketing the book and then expanding your brand beyond just being an author. That is Dr. Jeremy Blunt. And I am truly honored to have him here today to share his wealth of knowledge with all of you. So without further ado, I will let him take the realm and kind of give a little background on, on what he has been doing and how did he start. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Uh, about being here, getting a chance to, to to share and chat and kind of catch up a little bit on uh, some of the things that are new, the things that I, uh, we've been I've been doing. Um, so I got started into this. I guess I, I can always say it's just from way back when. Um, I was always the person that people went to for advice. They were asking questions and 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 because and I would always ask, why are y'all asking me? And they would say, because we knew that you would give us unbiased opinions. Okay. And uh, that grew into, you know what? Uh, people are always asking me. I need to make sure I know what I'm telling them. Uh, so one, I turned around and went back to school uh, <laughs> and learned <laughs> some things and, 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 and made sure I invested in it. So um, I wanted to make sure I was knowledgeable about what people were coming to me about. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, I specialize in relationships. So I always got that one. Yeah. Um, and so from that, we, you know, we launched a business. Um, this would be nine years ago uh, called Stitches for Life and kind of like a play on words uh, in which originally we started off doing counseling. Uh, and we have since then branched off to doing consulting and then now coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife uh, joins me in that in which so a lot of times we do a lot of coaching together mm -hmm. uh, when we're uh, out places. So uh, we have a nonprofit, uh, Stitches Influencing Purpose, in which we do a lot of give back into the community. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot of um, a, a, a lot of mentoring, providing resources to families and things of that nature. So uh, we're involved in a lot, but I am excited to talk about the book. Um, I did write a book and uh, my first book, Stitches, because some wounds need more than a Band-Aid cure. I'm excited to kind of talk about it today. Yeah, yeah. Let's jump right into that because you said a mouthful, right? Just with the title alone. So I kind of want to go down that lane. What is the meaning in, of the, you know, some things need more than a Band-Aid cure? Well, it was intended to, to bring hope and inspire uh, anyone who has ever felt like they were like in a cycle. They, they just couldn't seem to get out of making bad decisions or making mistakes from relationships to friendship to what they're supposed to do with their life. Um, so many times we look for answers in everywhere other than inside. Yeah. So the book is about learning how to be a stronger you and how to use the things that you've gone through and you've experienced to help you and to build you. Um, you know, what really inspired me about the book is how you could either use the things that you've gone through as potholes or stepping stones. Wow. And potholes, you know, <laughs> we dread them. Yeah. So, you, you know, you, you, you know that they're coming, but you still hit them. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, but then there are stepping stones that you know can take you to the next level. And that's kind of where the name Stitches came from. I, I know that's the question because everybody <laughs> always asks me, why the name Stitches? Yeah. Uh, from the medical perspective, Stitches... Uh, I mean, it's a tool that is used to simply hold a wound together long enough for the natural healing process to take place on its own. So I think that that kind of encompasses. And actually, that's beautiful, right? Because um, as we live life, like you say, we hit these potholes and we just keep going. And sometimes we don't get bandaged up. <laughs> but I like how you tied that in together, um, kind of in a physical meaning, but also on an emotional level as well. That's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So what was that process like um, writing the book, writing the first book? The process for me, um, you know, I, I did a little research prior to mm -hmm. um, people have been saying, hey, you need to write a book. You need to write a book. Uh, and it is it was an, a daunting process, a daunting task, um, because I talked to someone and they, they told me, hey, 
you know, if you're not willing to, you know, you need 10,000 words. You, you got to have 10,000 words. So you got to have 10,000 words is a whole lot to say. Yeah. And 10,000 words does not include like three letter words. If anything outside of three letter <laughs> words, that's a lot. Uh, so the process for me was something that I really just, I had to take back and just not think about the number of words I had to write, okay. but actually just think about what am I trying to say? Mm. and what message was it so it took me about six months um and I just wrote and and, and as it came to me I wrote when I you know when I needed to take a break I stopped and when I was ready to start back I wrote um and of course no it's not the last book uh but uh, and, and we'll talk more about that but you get to a point okay this is what I needed to say about this yeah and, and, and that was my process that's pretty good. Are there any strategies or insights from that process that you can kind of share with readers just to help them tap into their full potential as an author? Yes. Um, I'm going to use some of the strategies from the book, too. Okay. There's about at least 21 in okay. the book. Uh, <laughs> and at least 21. There, there's 21 chapters in the book, but I, there's at least 21 because and then there's a whole bunch of them inside of there. Um there are three, uh, two of them that I'll point out. One is what I call the recipe. Okay. And it will be a strategy for, you know, I'm from the South. And anybody from the South is familiar with a Southern cuisine called gumbo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, and and for those that are not, it is a thick stew uh, that originated from the Creole people. And it's a mixture from chicken to poultry to seasoning to greens, to okra, it's all kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, that they, and some people put seafood in it too, but uh, it's all <laughs> kind of stuff that they put in it. But it starts off with what we call a roux. Yeah. And the roux are the basic ingredients. And if the roux is not right, then nothing else is going to be right. Yeah. And so you have to pay special attention to the roux or otherwise, no matter what you add. So the, the, the biggest strategy I would tell people is, what is your rule? What is it that you bring to the table? Yeah. What is it about you that makes people want to hear what you're writing or want to hear what you have to say? Yeah. If you don't have the right rule, and, you know, sometimes that, that that comes with time. That comes with, you know, you have to experience some things. You know, I always was told when I was young, I had wisdom beyond my age. However, the one thing that I can know a whole bunch but there's some things that only come through experience. Yeah. So that, that you have to have some, um, what they say, some some feet in the game. Yeah. You, you <laughs> some skin in the game. You had, you had to have something. So that would be my first strategy. I would ask people, what is it that you bring? What's your rule? What is the basic? What is the foundation for you? And the next one, the, the second one that I would give is, uh, you know, you got to know when to hold and when to fold. <laughs> And most people think of cards immediately when I say that, but it's about the, there's a lot of lessons that can come from card games. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of research that got to go into it. There's, you know, understanding who your opponent is, understanding what the task is, what the objective is. It's making sure that you have a full understanding first of what it is that you're getting into. And then knowing the right time to let it out. And there's sometimes where just because you want to say something doesn't mean it's the right time to say it. Right. So knowing when to hold it, when to fold it, when to just say, you know what, I put forth an effort. This might not be the direction. Yeah. And making sure, hey, did I do everything that I was supposed to do in before I made this decision? So those are two of the strategies that I know not only just learn, but I also talk about in the book a little bit, too. Okay. Okay. And I heard you mention that it's not the last. So that means there's something coming next. There is something coming up. Uh, it is. I, I, I am so excited. It is It is just <laughs> out. Um, it is entitled Craft Your Love. Um, and it is an ebook. It's my first time doing an ebook. Um, and just, just kind of give you a synopsis of what, what does craft your love really mean. Uh, the title is Craft Your Love, The Five Essentials to a Healthy, Long-Lasting Relationship. Um, I've, I've spoken to thousands of people. I, I've, I've facilitated and hosted, you know, dozens of seminars. And, and I always get asked the same question. How do I make it work? Mm. 
So this book is about the five essential concepts and they all spell out the word craft. So uh, this book is born from a simple yet profound realization. Relationships not just thrive on love, but on skills. Yeah. Skills that can actually be learned, honed, and mastered. Yeah. In other words, it's a craft. <laughs> okay. The heart of the book is um, the C stands for curiosity in communication, reflection, affirmations, and, and allowance, forgiveness, teachability. I call it the five step approach or what I call the craft framework. Each step is essential to make sure that you have an art for not just getting a relationship, but building one and crafting it into something that will stand the test of time. There's the journal and affirmation cards that we've also that I've also come up with to help people, you know, continue the process. Because it's one thing to read it in this setting. It's another thing to apply those things. So I'm excited to be able to bring that to people. Yeah. Um, and it's also, uh, you know, seminars and things like that, that uh, I will go into more detail uh, from those that get it and want, uh, want more help with it. That's good. That's good. And so it uh, it came out on what day? March 1st. Okay. It came out on March 1st, guys. And so they can get it on all of the ebook platforms, right? All the ebook platforms, uh, Amazon, like you can go to my website. Okay. Uh, and get it. Uh, <laughs> make sure that is uh, that's available. They can actually just Google the Stitches Group. Okay. Dot com, and it'll take you to any and everything that we are associated with. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. And I will make sure we have all the details and all the links, all the main links that people can um, get that ebook, and as well as the journal and the affirmation card. Yes, and and both of those are also available. Uh, I, I'm trying this out. It's an okay. e-journal, so it's fillable. Okay. So you'll actually get a PDF that you can actually fill it out. Uh, and you can also print it out, of course. And then also e-affirmation cards. So electronic affirmation cards. Okay. Uh, designed specifically so that, hey, that you can get them and actually share them with other folks as well. That's pretty good. That's pretty cool. All right. Well, since this is not your first book, but it is a new baby, a new project. I want to talk about marketing that baby. How or what strategies do you plan to implement to go beyond this first month since it's been released? Well, uh, a couple of different things. So okay. let, let, let me let me let me add to the question a little bit first. Yeah. Um, because a large part when I when I always talk to people about marketing, because they do ask me about that. How do you let people know what you're doing and that kind of thing? I always tell them, you know, the first part of that is pouring into you. Yeah. And this is something that I think I did differently this time that I didn't do before. Okay. Because before I was pouring out of the what I call my body. Okay. This time I was pouring over my leftovers. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. And I, I believe that those are two totally different places. And this one is essential yeah. because uh, it's a dangerous place when you are pouring out of what I call desperation. Is you just trying to get it out and just say, get what's in your head out. Yeah. Uh, so a large part of it is what are you doing to pour into you? That is a marketing strategy. Yeah. It is making sure you are full. Because when you're, when you don't, don't don't laugh at my phrase, when you're thirsty, it's dangerous. <laughs> so don't mark it. Thirsty. Because when you're thirsty, you'll take anything. Yeah, yeah. So when you're thirsty, you'll target everybody. And your target market can't be everybody. True. So you need to know exactly who you're targeting and who you're going for. And then... I would tell you the, the, the other parts of it, uh, other strategies, who supports you already. Yeah. You you want to get them out of, you, you want to address them first. Make sure the people that know you know this is what you're doing and what you're working on. And make sure, you know, they're investing in you. It says something if the people that you have in your circle don't invest in what you're doing. 
And then start looking around at others that are doing what you're doing. You're not going to corner the market and figure you're the only one and everybody got to come to you. Yeah. Networking has power. So networking with other people that do what you do. I often tell people, you know, um, <laughs> Southern used to have this phrase whenever they did an introduction, often imitated, but never duplicated. Yeah. You know, you should, there are going to be other people that do what you do, but nobody can bring what you bring to the table yeah. because nobody is you. So you got to know that. And uh, the last uh, strategy, the key strategy that I will tell them is don't rush it. Mm. Like take your time. You know, a lot of, you know, we're trying to be deadlines and we feel like we just got to be in the top 100 books, like just like that. Right. right. In reality, you know, it takes time to, 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 to get there. So I, I, I tell people, you know, you can be slow to success, but don't rush the film. Mm. And that is a gem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so take your time and get there. Yeah, that's beautiful. And so I, from what I am hearing, I'm gathering community has played a big role um, with you and your marketing. Like it, like you say, tapping into those who know you and tapping into, um, um, I guess, a new market, building a new market around what you have going currently. Um, is that something that you, you've implemented before and kind of bringing those up to speed or are you kind of starting new? I, I, I started implementing that. Uh, I noticed uh, not just your circle, but you have to go to circles outside. So uh, going to other people, you know, other conferences and other people that are doing what you're doing because you're learning to also letting people familiarize themselves with you mm -hmm. and what you bring to the table also. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And so one thing that a lot of authors toy around with also is book cover design. <laughs> um, and, and so, you know, honestly, I, I have to ask how instrumental is that with you in both of your processes and choosing a book cover? Was it something you just stuck with an image or vision that you had, or did you kind of, open up to what suggestions could be? Oh, uh, I opened up to suggestions uh, for stitches <laughs> and, and, and uh, craft your love. I kind of played around with uh, it. It is essential. Right? It's in, it, uh, invaluable. I would tell anybody mm -hmm. that, you know, yes, your content is awesome, but uh, I also like to look at it from a marketing standpoint. You, It's like selling your business. You get 30 seconds. From your description to the cover, like if your cover doesn't, you know, those days of you can just write the name on the cover, people yeah. pick it up and go buy it. Those yeah. days are not, unless you are a well-off author or well-known author, they're not doing that just because of your name. It has to be something that captivates them, that intrigues them. And then that description on the back, that's like a, a elevator pitch is what they call it in public speaking and marketing. That's your 30 seconds to sell them on why they ought to read everything inside of the book. Yeah. So those things are invaluable. You and, and, and So fine-tuning those and making sure that that is right is a must. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Is there anything, uh, or should I say, are there any unconventional methods outside of social media, um, outside of word of mouth that you have used to, to market your book? Unconventional ways that I, I, I've, I guess I could, I've, I've, I've paired them with other things. Okay. Yeah. So uh, these, with the new book, I have uh, electronic affirmation cards, but I actually uh, created what's called blunt motivation and they are everyday affirmation cards. Okay. So I paired them with, uh, so I have other things, number one, that, you know, those are, are helpful. And then being able to point, hey, more information is in the book. Um, so, you know, kind of creating a variety of, of things that I offer for them. Okay. Uh, I paired it with the coaching that I provide. I paired it with the counseling. So it wasn't just a book. It was other things that I also offer folks so that if they can get one of them, yeah. you know, sometimes they'll get the book, but they won't get anything else. Sometimes they'll get the coaching and they won't get anything else right. but being a pairing what you do with other things um you know i have t-shirts uh we have a brand of uh what we call unapologetic 
lot of uh, a lot of t-shirts and slang uh, sayings. So we have a, a bunch of different uh, ways of getting the message to them. And then the last piece is uh, pairing it up. We do workshops. We uh, we host what I call couples date nights, okay. uh, game nights that uh, we actually uh, facilitated one just this past weekend mm -hmm. um, in which we went out and a way of helping people to better understand uh, these concepts that you're bringing to the table. Okay. So it's not just about writing it in the book. It's about bringing it to them because there are some people that will never read your book but they'll hear you or they'll mm -hmm. see you, you know, unconventional. You're using social media uh, in one of those and in, in more than just putting a whole bunch of words there because just putting it on your website is not enough. Right. Putting right. it to where, where they are. Using TikTok and not Instagram. Yeah. You know, using those platforms to share a little bit of information uh, to, to, to get their curiosity. Yeah, sounds good. Well, I know um, you are a busy person. We're kind of ending the near, the, um, nearing the end, I'm sorry, of the show. Before we wrap up, I want to ask you two things. If you can share one bit of information that can help an author along the way on their marketing journey. Um, second thing is to let everyone know where they can reach you for your services, for your products, or if they just want to learn more. Okay. Um, one, there was one thing that I would, would, would share with folks to uh, all new and upcoming authors or even established ones. Be relatable. Mm -hmm. Be relatable. You know, I've read some books and, and attended some things in which they use terms and phrases that, uh, although very intellectual and, you know, eye opening, yeah. it wasn't applicable. Yeah. Like I, I couldn't see how to apply. And if you, you want people to do more than just read, yeah. because this is not about, yeah, it's not about making a whole lot of money. Yes, we do have to make money, keep lights on and pay some bills, <laughs> uh, but, but it's really about helping people. Yeah. And what is, so you ask yourself, what's your passion? Make sure you're following your passion and make sure you're relating that passion to your readers. And because if they can't relate to it, then they won't apply. They won't follow you. Yeah. And then they won't continue to support you. So, and making sure you have little things in there to, to thank them along the way. Yeah. Because one thing about it, people don't have to support you. They don't have to do those things. But showing them your appreciation for taking the time and investing in you. So, incidentally, that means give stuff some things away free. Yeah. So we'll throw that out there. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be afraid to give some stuff away free. Yeah. Um, but those, you know, don't give everything away free. But make sure people understand how much you appreciate them uh for for supporting you in what you do and make sure your information is relatable. You can get in touch with me or anything that we're doing by simply Googling the Stitches Group. One word, uh, and it'll actually take you to all of our websites. From Stitches for Life to jlblunt.com to Stitches Influencing Purpose to our mental health gallery to all the many different things that we are working on and that we're doing. Uh, and it'll also give you a link to how you can get my new book, yeah. Craft Your Love and the old book. So, um, so all of those different ways. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. It, it, this, was, this was truly a joy. I love to, to, uh, to spend more time with you. Uh, and, and, and uh, you know, if you'd like to have it back, I'll be glad to come back. Yeah, I'm sure after this, we will get a lot of questions <laughs> and an <laughs> influx of inquiries on you. And so I will get with you. But for everyone listening today, we will actually give do a, a giveaway of the Craft Your Love Story e-journal and the e-affirmations. Um, and so we will let Dr. Blunt do the picking on our social media page when the time comes. So make sure you keep <laughs> keep watch on our Instagram and Facebook so you can see how you can be a part of the giveaway. Again, thank you. It's always a pleasure reconnecting with you. Um, thank you for giving your time today to share space with us and all of the aspiring authors that will listen to this show. You are truly a blessing. Thank you. Thank you.